Good afternoon and welcome to a winter wonderland. We're at Welsh Stadium at Emporia State University for today's Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week. It's the 2023 Kansas Class 6A State Football Championship game as you got Derby taking on Gardner Edgerton. Hi everybody, Kevin White, Johnny Beck, and Bethany Moman here on Spectrum News. And it's the Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week. 6A State Championship, Gardner so close last year but finish second. They're looking for their first ever state championship, but they play a 6A powerhouse in Derby, looking to make it seven state titles in the last 11 years. We got the elements. We got two fast and physical teams. What do you expect today, Johnny? Well, I think Gardner being able to come back and get to this game, only one hiccup on the year to get back to this. That means these guys are playing at a very high level. And like you said, Derby's no stranger to this game. They're going to come out here with a bunch of confidence today. Quarterbacks in the spotlight in our high V player profile. This is the coach's son, Braxton Clark for Derby. He was a guy that got hurt week four, out four weeks, just back in time to start the playoffs. This guy's got 25 touchdowns on the year. He's a dynamic player. Look for him to be the catalyst for this offense. And running the flex bone for Gardner Edgerton is Braven Powell. Tough responsibility today to take care of the footballs. These guys like to run the ball. He's got 30 touchdowns on the year. Look for him to establish the run game, but can also get the ball down the field in the passing game. 6A state championship game in a snowstorm. It's the High V High School Game of the Week, and we're back with the opening kickoff right after this. Heavy snow, temperatures in the low 30s, Emporia, Kansas, for the 6A state championship between Gardner, Edgerton, and Derby. Derby won the coin toss and has elected to take the football. Win, not much of a factor. It's all the snow and the cold. So who takes care of the football will be very important today as you take a look at the deep man, Hubbard and Finley for the Derby Panthers. Out of the AVCT, they won their conference. It's Gardner Edgerton out of the Sunflower League. They won their conference. Now they play for the big trophy, the 6A state championship in a snowstorm. Adrian the kickoff, up man will take it. And not much on the return by the linebacker, Indelacio, who's one of their leading tacklers, as we send it down to our sideline reporter with what, three or four layers, Bethany Bowman. Thanks, Kevin. Yes, definitely bundled up down here. I'll double, double as your weather girl, too, and uh, not much to report, but very wet and coming down very hard right now. But the Derby Panthers into their seventh state title game since 2013, a true 6A power. Head coach Brandon Clark said that his team's excited to be back here, but of course the Trailblazers back into the state title game for the second straight season. They lost a heartbreaker last year by one point after going for two. Lost to Manhattan last season. I know it's going to be a great game here with two really good teams, and I'm really excited. Back to you guys. And the Derby offense is quarterback by Braxton Clark. He is the coach's son. He is a senior, and he's put up impressive passing numbers. Not too bad a rusher as well. Hunter is their leading rusher. And their leading receivers are Rudy and Brame. And they're spotting the football on the 32-yard line for the linebacker return the opening kickoff and running room off the left side and this is Derek Hubbard down the sideline and he's finally ridden down after a big run to start the ball game Hubbard was the guy behind Dylan Edwards the guy you see playing for Deion Sanders in Colorado and got limited touches but he's a talent as well yeah Hubbard just right off the tackle and see the Offensive line doing a good job keeping a hat on a hat and Hubbard with a little bit of speed up the sideline. Porter able to bring him down. Ball at the 16 yard line. Here's Hubbard again. Short run this time. Gardner Edgerton plays a 3 3 defense. They have been tough, only allowing about eight points per game. They've had three shutouts, 21 takeaways. Brian McCall is their defensive coordinator. And he's seen a derby offense that averages over 400 yards per game, 41 points per game. The left-hander. And this run out of bounds. Kindler, the Will linebacker, escorted him to the snowy sideline. So now we're going to be a third down coming up. Well, Clark 
Tried to extend the play a little bit, just not able to get his footing and get up the sideline there. And that's going to be the challenge for both teams, being able to change direction and stay on your feet. And there is a Brandon Clark in his 18th year. He's won six state titles, the last one coming in 2020. He's won 79% of his games. Took over in 2006, the same year. This quarterback right here, his son, was born. He's directing traffic, throwing balls deflected, and nearly intercepted on the rebound. They were looking for Colton Rudy, the wide receiver, and nice work there by Eli Porter in the secondary. And it'll be a fourth down and 10 facing Derby on their first drive of the game. Yeah, you saw Dibiak with the early pressure. Clark able to avoid it. Looked like he was trying to get his receiver to kind of get in a scramble drill and get up the field, but unable to complete that pass. Gonna leave him with a long fourth down situation here. Yep, fourth down and 10. Saw the long run by Hubbard to start the game, but now the Derby defense is stiffened and will get a timeout taken by Derby and Coach Brandon Clark, who said this season's been fun, but it's been stressful. And if you don't know the story, his son lacerated his kidney in week four in a ball game against Hutch and missed four weeks before he was cleared before the playoffs. So there's the stress, but he has his son Braxton and his son Blade on the roster. So he's having a, a good time coaching his two sons this year. And Johnny, they're playing for another state championship. Yeah, obviously a special season for, for the Clark family, as you just mentioned, the two sons on the team. And, you know, this is a, a program that expects to be in the state championship game every year, but had a little adversity with the injury to the quarterback, but able to right that ship and able to catch fire when they need to. And, here they are back in the championship. Your officiating crew for today, Kirk Simone, Mike Holt, Brad Eubanks, Scott Shank, and Pete Nadio. Working in the elements here in Emporia. Well, big decision here after a timeout, fourth down and 10. Derby will go for it on the first drive of the game. In the red zone, they go to the end zone. Rudy over his head, incomplete. Now, Rudy turned to the official once he got in the end zone, thought he was held up a bit. No flags down. It'll be a defensive stop. Ball over on downs now to Gardner Edgerton. Yeah, it seemed like the pass was a little bit high. It's going to be the challenge today in the passing game is being able to get a good grip on the ball. Just didn't have the touch here to get it over the top. Good defense stand there by Gardner after giving up the first offensive play for a big, big yardage. So. Gardner Edgerton comes out on offense. They run the flex bone. Dustin Delaney won a state championship as Shawnee Mission East is their offensive coordinator. And they'll run it about 70% of the time. They average 39 points per game. And this will be their fullback, Butash, with a nice gain on a uh, first down run. And the head coach of Gardner Edgerton is Jesse Owen, former Olathe North Star. In his third year, he's also been a head coach at Olathe East for six years. And he was on that Olathe North team, the first ever to win a state championship under Gene Weir with the Eagles trying to do the same thing here with Gardner Edgerton, lead them to their first ever football championship. Powell calling his own number, spins around. He averages 6.5 yards per carry. And it's gonna leave him third down and short after that short run. You see there, just trying to get the cleats into the turf and get a little bit of forward momentum there, but Gardner's left himself with a manageable third down situation here. Third down and a couple ball loose on the field. And Derby signaling they have it. A lot of bodies. Ripping and grabbing at the ball, and let's see what the officials call here. Players signaling Derby football, officials still pulling bodies from the pile. Looks like Derby came up with the football. The officials are talking right now. 
Derby, yeah, they thought they recovered it, but the officials not so sure. They're meeting. And now there's the signal right there. Our first turnover of the game by Gardner Edgerton. And the short field now a for Derby. On the offense, that penalty's declined. First step. No. Along with not being able to see the lines, <laughs> uh, we can't see the flags on the field, but the ball, uh, yeah. Well, you talk about that mesh Game point. Right and, there. And, you know, anytime there's a little bit of precipitation, it just becomes that more demanding that you've got to be firm with your hands. And Gardner with the first turnover of the game. Gavin Fannensteel, the linebacker with the fumble recovery, is the quarterback running it. That is Braxton Clark. And his dad says he's so smart he knows the playbook better than myself. So he knows the playbook better than his own father who's calling the plays. He's a film hound, plays under control. He doesn't get flustered. He's a college prospect. As this team beat Topeka, Lawrence in the last two weeks, beating higher ranked teams in Manhattan and Washburn Rule to get to this championship game. Here's Clark slowing down. Chopping his steps because the footing is obviously not good, but not much gained on the play. And it's going to be third down. They still need about eight yards. I don't think he got much on this play, Johnny. Yeah, you see Gardner doing a good job of just stringing it out to the sideline and not allowing Clark to get upfield there. And that's going to be the, the tough part. You got to get going north and south. The more you go side to side, the harder it is to pick up positive yardage. Sabiston, the second leading tackler on the defense, makes the stop and now whistles as the ball is snapped. They're going to get the defense, looks like. Dead ball. Encroachment on the defense. Five yard penalty. So third and eight will go down to third down and three. Obviously, in this part of the field, it's four down territory, and that makes it a little bit easier for Derby now as they don't necessarily have to put the ball in the air on this third down play. Ball is on the 24-yard line after they fumble, and they give it off on a end-around play, and Deshaun Brame, the tight end, takes it in from 24 yards out on third down and short. This guy, a big-time D1 prospect, got offers from the likes of Alabama. And uh, he makes the first big play of the game, the junior tight end who everybody in the Division I ranks seems to want. Guy that has 12 receiving touchdowns on the year. told his athletic profile uh, according to coach Clark when he was a youngster he was a big guy and his dad played football at K-State his mom played basketball at K-State extra point try Grady Jessup up and through so taking advantage of an early fumble by Gardner Edgerton Brame able to get in but uh, Fannin Steele recovers his mismatched uh, mesh point and ball on the field and Derby recovers it, short field, and they convert on kind of a little gadget play, a little end around to the tight end. Yeah, the misdirection kind of caught that defensive line for Gardner on their heels. And you see there, just good job again up front by the Derby offensive line clearing that running lane. You see these guys trying to clear off the. Yeah, they're trying to make lines, lines on the field, bit. yeah. As the snow continues to fall here in Emporia, Kevin White, Johnny Beck, Bethany Bowman, our entire crew in a uh, snowstorm here in Kansas on a 6A state championship or a championship Saturday throughout the state of Kansas. Had games uh, started earlier in the lower classes, Johnny, just to beat the weather. And I was talking to some of the Derby people and it's snowing a lot harder down there, I'm told, and a lot of their fans decided not to make the trip. They normally would fill the visiting bleachers, but some of the fans not making the trip because of the weather was so bad in Derby before, uh, well before the game started. Jessup to kick it back. 
Gardner edged in an early turnover that Derby is able to convert. That's what they do. And whistles as the ball is put back into play. You kind of saw the approach from the kicker. Dead ball. A little unordinary. Encroachment on the kicking team. Five yard penalty. Re kick. And I think some of those guys on the cover team just kind of got out of rhythm there and pushing it back now five yards. This is a good Gardner team on in the kick return game. So looks like they're going to try and keep it away from the deep man. As you see him now switching. Chris DeVore is the special teams coach and you saw Coach Clark go out there and say something to the kicker where he wants this ball sent to as they're backed up five yards. So this may be a uh, directional style kick. Jessup been the hero the last two weeks and wins over Washburn Rule and Manhattan. And now he's just going to send it deep. And here comes the return by uh, Gardner Edgerton. And good coverage on the special teams. As turning it was Griffin Martin, one of the uh, running backs in the flex bone offense. And I was curious if Derby sees the flex bone. Yeah, actually, a couple teams do play the flex bone. Hutch, even despite after Coach Dryling left, still runs a flex bone offense. Coach Clark sees them, and Campus also runs a flex bone offense, so they're very familiar with how to stop the flex bone offense that Gardner Edgerton will run. These teams have only played one time in their school's history. That was just a few years ago in the COVID year 2020. Here's Powell, steps out of the pack, and is taken down. Nice play by Demaria Baker from the secondary, the all-conference DB. Gain about three or four on the play by Braven. Now you see Powell just following those big guys up front, but Derby just running downhill, not allowing a lot of running room on the outside there. And again, though, this Gardner team, they'll take four and a half, five yards a pop. It's a three-four defense, only giving up 15 points per game. Nice. This running play not doing too much, as that was Butash. Butash is the fullback. They'll have a couple of wings out there. Or as their leading receiver, that would be Colton Hawkinson, the guys up front. Big Surge, James, Whitley, Matlock, and more. Now facing third down and five. Ball at the 28-yard line. Field covered in snow, so we have to do our best to give you the spot. Sort of pitch to the edge, and it's blown up. Again, that is Baker again from the secondary. And Griffin Martin really had no shot as his legs were taken out for a loss. It's fourth down. Yeah, Baker just beats the block on the outside here and just blows the play up for a loss. And so Gardner's going to be in a punting situation here. We'll have to see how the, the weather affects this punt. Baker, a college prospect. Guy that had an ACL last year and still was first team all league. That's how good it he is. As the punting unit coming in, this will be Braven Powell, low end over end kick. It'll get across midfield, 33 yards, no return. And we get Derby back on offense again. Derby lost their first game of the year. They've won 11 straight since then. Fans all bundled up on a snowy Saturday in late November in Emporia, Kansas for the 6A state championship game. Ball on the 42-yard line. It's Derby zone. Hubbard in the backfield. Clark fading, firing, and a nice catch there in stride to Colton Rudy. And another big play early on here in the first quarter. We saw the Hubbard run. Now Rudy showing great hands in the snowstorm makes the catch. And will go for a nice gain. As 
as Derby wants to go quickly. Ball on the 30. It's a 28-yard completion. As we go back to the sticky hands of Colton Rudy. And this was the, the same play on that fourth down that was not converted by Derby. They go right back to it. And Rudy comes up with the big catch there. Good touch on that pass by Clark getting it over the top. Offensive lineman Robinson, Salazar, Ediger, Renberger, and Henriquez. He's the right tackle, and this play is stopped for little or no gain. It's penetration in the backfield by the Gardner Edgerton defense, and that play made there by Spencer Easley, who uh, Coach Owen says is our most underrated player on defense, the defensive end making a play here. Yeah, we saw easily earlier in the year against Olathe North have a big time game and you've got guys like him and Dubiak up front wreak a lot of havoc for this defensive line. Third down and eight Derby. And we got flags down prior to the snap. Another penalty on Derby. Dead ball. Full start on the offense. Still third down. Now, Johnny, when you talk to the coaches, obviously they're going to say can't have penalties, can't have turnovers, but every possession counting in this ball game. And Coach Clark said we've had some issues with penalties, but we need to keep our penalties down. Now they go to way behind the sticks at third down and 13. The coach's son scrambling. The left-hander gets away from one ridden down from behind a sack by Isaiah Williams the defensive end for Gardner Edgerton yeah and credit that sack to the defensive backs for Gardner's there was just nobody open and Clark's rolling to a strong side just not able to get that pass off and again you see this defensive line for Gardner just relentless finishing off that play with the big time sack it's going to put Derby probably in a punting situation here is at about fourth and 20. Also involved in the play was Caleb Dewey, who's the leading tackler on this Gardner Edgerton 3 3 defense. Sent the quarterback to the outside. Williams got the sack. And now on fourth down and 16, we got another flag. Dead ball. Delay game on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. You're just wondering if they're giving themselves some yardage here to punt the football and try and pin them deep. Looks like the punt team's coming out here now, so I think that was an elected penalty that Derby wanted to take. Although with the field conditions, I think a 30-yard punt's probably pretty good. Grady Jessup is their kicker slash punter. He's waiting at midfield. Chris Kegley is the long snapper. Jessup able to get it away. Good pressure, though, by Gardner Edgerton. It takes a sideways hop near the 10-yard line and goes out of bounds right there. That's a very good punt. 31 yards, and now Gardner Edgerton will take over at their own 10-yard line. Well, and that's what this game is going to become as a field position game. I think both offenses are going to struggle just moving the football just with the field conditions, so... Look for these special teams to be a factor today. It's not just punting and kicking. You got to make sure you get a good hold. These punters got to make sure they receive the snap. Good punt there for Derby. Flexbone offense out. Butash is the fullback. Motion, and they'll give it off to uh, Butash. And Malcolm Dewan has got to the edge there as the defense. Britton Pascal. The leading tackler, number six, involved in the stop. As this running play shut down quickly as Middlebrook, the strong safety, and the uh, Will linebacker, Pascal, second team all league. They say he's got a nose for the football. Super smart kid, two and a half year starter. Second down along, pitch out. Again, not much doing there. This is Griffin Martin, the senior, and you saw Johnny when he got to the edge, he was really concerned about his footing, and he didn't put his foot in the dirt and really take off. He was kind of pitter-patting around, and then 
will stop for little or no gain on the play. Well, and that's, we talked about it in the pregame. It's going to be the toughest thing, being able to get your footing and stick that foot in the ground and pick up those yards. Defenses are doing a good job at just stringing the offense sideline to sideline. Horn back, undersized sophomore, ran down the play. Now third down and long. Powell to throw deep in his own territory. Has a man wide open. Over the shoulder catch for Gardner Edgerton by Grant Ellis. What a play by Grant Ellis, the senior, his 35th catch of the year. It gets Gardner Edgerton out of a big hole. And it's a big time third down conversion. You see the fake here to Ellis and just kind of sneaks up the sideline there. And even though he's wide open, that's still a tough pass and a tough catch. That's a huge gain for Gardner Edgerton, like you said, to get out of their own end zone. It's like 26 yards by number 26, Grant Ellis, who also is one of their uh, wing backs in their flex bone. First and 10, GE. And the fullback clogged up. Call this defensive line for Derby the Dogs. And they're not the biggest guys in the world. Hopper, Bolin. Bolin's only a sophomore, and Hornbeck's also a sophomore. See these guys, they uh, they love the challenge. They've got motors, but they're not the biggest guys in the world. You got 190, 275, and 205. It's a very big offensive line for uh, Gardner Edgerton. And this is Butash just challenging the right side. And stop by Fannensteel, who's the third leading tackler on the team. He had the early fumble recovery that set up Derby's lone score, the rushing touchdown by Brain. Yeah, and you talk about this D line for Derby. You know, their number one job is just to keep these offensive linemen off the linebackers to allow them to run downhill. And we've seen him do a good job as. Pascal's been on, been on about every tackle up the middle. Third down and seven. Powell steps and throws. Diving catch is made. Yes, that is Grant Ellis again. His second bit catch of the drive. And it is a first down catch. It was right at the stake, but the officials give him the good mark, and the Trailblazers will move the chains. Ellis doing a good job of finding where the sticks are, knowing... He's got a little bit of a buffer there and catches it with about a yard to spare. But again, good play call, good pass, good catch. Keep the drive alive for Gardner. Under a minute to play in your first quarter. And here's Powell keeping. And getting too much on the play. I think it was Peyton Neptune, the Panther, was involved in the stop. Neptune is a senior. Short gain, second down and eight. Let's see if they want another, another play run here in the first quarter. Yes, they do. Ball near midfield, second down and long. And this play breaks free up the middle for the fullback. And that is Butash, and it's another first down run as he goes for nine. And this is Gardner Edgerton's best drive of the game as the clock will wind out on a snowy first quarter here in Emporia in the 6A state championship game. After one, Derby by a touchdown. Snowy Emporia for the start of the second quarter in the 6A state championship game. And the fullback, nothing doing here. And that was a Hopper. The uh, leader of the defensive line shutting down that running play by Butesh. Mason Hopper, returning starter, big weight room guy, leads the team in tackles for a loss, sacks, fumbles caused, and he's blocked a punt this year. So number 43, Mason Hopper, three-year starter, the leader of the uh, D-line, and a state qualifier at wrestling. So good all-around athlete. Yeah, you like to hear about guys that are Competing in multiple sports and just shows you a good athletic department. Now timeout, Gardner Edgerton. Is, they're facing a second down and nine. Coach Owen out there to talk to his guys. Looks a little frustrated. But uh, he 
he's a fiery guy as we check in with Bethany on the field. Thanks, guys. Yes, definitely a very hard surface to play on here right now. It's, uh, you know, definitely not a snow that's sticking very well, but it's, it's still kind of wet. And um, I definitely feel like that's impacting, you know, a lot of the guys' abilities to utilize their speed and um, athleticism down here. Definitely just a, a tough environment to play in for sure. Saw that one run by Derek Hubbard. Um, you know, Raven Powell's always been really great this season using his run game, quarterback for Gardner Edgerton, and we're just not seeing that right now. But uh, definitely, I think, impacted by the snow and weather we're having today. Yeah, Derby, 53 yards rushing to 28 by Gardner Edgerton. And after the timeout by GE, they'll go end around. And this play is blown up. Randy Singleton couldn't turn the corner as he was met there by Neptune and also Pascal. Well, linebackers collaborating on the Panthers defense. Well, Bethany just talked about it. These guys just aren't able to showcase that agility, change of direction, so big advantage to the defense if they can just play downhill. See Gardner in a tough third down situation here. Derby with 99 total yards to Gardner Edgerton, 61. 24 yard touchdown run by Brame of Derby, your only score, one turnover. That was by Gardner Edgerton. Passing deep middle, pass, deflected and incomplete. Singleton, I think he got, uh, you know, blinded a little bit there by Middlebrook, who was coming up, the safety man, and able to lose the ball for a second as Middlebrook went for the interception. I think he. Uh, blinded the receiver down the field and it floats incomplete fourth down and 12 for Gardner Edgerton deepest penetration of the game by the GE offense averaging 367 yards per game and now movement on the left tackle Gabe James And it'll be a five-yard penalty on the Trailblazers. Test, 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 test. Their third appearance in the state championship game, 2009, with Bubba Starling in 5A. They lost to Hutchinson, and then, of course, last year they lost in heartbreak fashion in double OT to Manhattan. This is their third appearance as Braven Powell to punt it on a fourth down and sends it to the sideline. He was directionally kicking us 32 yards and no return. And Derby comes back on offense. Spotting the football at the 15 yard line. Braxton Clark. Yes, he is the coach's son. Got his little brother Blade as a quarterback on the team. They fake the reverse and go around the end with Hubbard and a nice game before he's tackled by Cameron Porter. But a little gadgetry there early on. And they'll get a nice gain, about eight yards on the play. Yeah, just enough going on in the backfield to kind of stop those. Gardner defenders and already seen Hubbard with a big run today, picking up good yardage on first down there. Second down and short. And this is Hubbard. He's more of the scat back, but once again, uh, he was the guy that backed up Dylan Edwards. And if you watch the University of Colorado, you see he's the running back for the Buffs. This guy was his backup last year. He's a pretty good player, quick back. Dylan Edwards set all kinds of rushing records. 6,400 yards, only 108 touchdowns in his derby career. It is a first down now for the Panthers as they give it off to Rudy. And Rudy will end around to the wide receiver, first team all conference player. And a nice gain on first down. Yes, he's going to get about six yards. Also, a baseball standout. Derby. Again, you're getting the misdirection here from this Derby offense, and 
Starting to be a little bit effective with keeping those Gardner defenders on their heels is another good pickup on first down for Derby. And movement by the left guard, it's Salazar. But, you know, just talking to Coach Clark. Ball. False start on the offense, five yard penalty. Okay. He said, you know, the stressful part of your season was dealing with that week four injury uh, in the Hutch game uh, to your son. And he said, you know, yeah, he came and told me his back was a little sore in the third quarter, but he finished the game. But after the game, uh, he uh, noticed uh, some blood in the stool, and that means he had to go to the hospital, and they diagnosed it as a lacerated kidney, as here's Hubbard upended after a, a short pickup. But that's a scary situation for a dad and his son, but after four weeks, you know, he was cleared, but there was some question whether he would be cleared to play at all the rest of the year, but he was able to get back after what is a serious injury. I think if you follow the NFL, you heard Luke Musgrave of the Green Bay Packers suffered the same injury. He's gonna be out for four weeks as he's on IR. Pass to the near side, it's caught, and that is Brame the tight end, and that is a first down. Once again, this is the big time D1 prospect that Alabama has already offered, and he has the touchdown of 18 yards early in the ball game, and now has big first down catch. You can see it, Johnny. Yep. This guy looks yep. like a stud walking around on the field before the game. Well, very good route. Attacked that ball. Caught that ball with his hands and then able to get up the sideline there for a few, ex few extra yards. There's Hubbard. And he'll get uh, a gain to the 44 as that's Dewey there, the most improved player on the defense with the nice form tackle here. The cat, they call him, the cat linebacker in the defense for GE. End around, this is Rudy, and he'll be thrown for a loss as the Trailblazers not fooled at all as that was their second leading tackler, Thomas Saviston, the Mike linebacker who shot through and threw Rudy for a loss. I think Saviston just reading his keys, knowing that, that ball's gonna come back around. And anytime these linebackers today are getting downhill, they're able to blow these plays up for big time losses. And see Derby goes back to the passing game here. Loss of a six. It was Saviston who got in the state final last year. That was really his only uh, big time playing time as there was an injury. And he had some nice plays for them in that overtime loss. Here's a pass, and there's Brame wide open. The tight end, another first down catch, and the big guy rumbling down the sidelines. This guy is a big time player. Desan Brame, the junior, got a bushel full of D1 offers, and you can see it as he makes another big play. Again, you see Clark with the confidence throwing to him. He's got those big hands. He's a big target, but more impressed with the uh, capability after the catch. 35 yards, first and 10 from the 26. Hubbard shut down on this play. And that was Dewey again. Dewey, leading tackler on the team, then Saviston, and then Easley. Those are the three top tackle getters for this very good Trailblazers defense. Amazing, they've scored seven defensive touchdowns in the year. That is a big number for a defensive group. Second down and eight. Panthers after the long pass play to Brain. Right on the doorstep of the red zone, passing, and this time it's dropped. That was Dalen Bledsoe, the junior wide out. As 18 catches coming in, couldn't hang on, and now third down and long, Derby. So just a quick hitch route. Again, created a little bit of separation there, unable to haul that pass in. Again, it's going to leave Derby with a long third down situation, but we talked about it earlier. Kind of in a four down territory here is probably not going to be a lot of field goals attempted. Even though the kicker's been the hero the last couple of weeks with game-winning field goals by Jessup 
and wins over Washburn Rule in Manhattan. Here's Hubbard, and Hubbard breaks a tackle in space down the sidelines, and a nice run by Hubbard, and he's going to have it. Looks like it's going to be inside the 10 yard line, first and goal. Derek Hubbard making guys miss in space. Well, watch Hubbard here. He's at that low center of gravity, able to stop and just kind of run through those tackles. It's a good job of staying patient there on the outside, allowing his wide receiver to get that block. I'm out. Gardner Edgerton. And timeout taken by GE as that will be number two. And 17 yard run, first and goal derby as Derek Hubbard was averaging 7.4 yards per carry. Able to uh, make guys miss, keep his footing in a snowstorm and big time run. Brames had a couple of big time catches, so the big stars for the Panthers Hubbard, Brame, Rudy, Clark, the quarterback, really stepping up on this drive. Well, this is gut check time for this Gardner defense as they can get a stop here. Keeps the game in a manageable situation, but seeing this defense, like you said, Kev, come up with big plays all year long. They're going to need one here to keep this Derby team out of the end zone. Yeah, they're plus three in turnover ratio. And now spot this football at the seven yard line where it'll be first and goal Panthers. Hubbard to the right of Clark in a shotgun. And three receivers deployed to the right side. In the slot is their big stud, number seven, Brain, the division one prospect tight end. Here's Hubbard up the middle. Hubbard dives, and he is in. Touchdown, Derby. Derek Hubbard, seven-yard rushing touchdown. Great blocking up front, and he saw the crease. Oh, this is the guy that got him on the doorstep with that 17-yard big-time run, and Hubbard scoring his 14th rushing touchdown of the year. Yeah, and he had the big... Big run to start off the game. Kind of went quiet for a couple drives, but right there came back alive and looks like he's building up a bunch of confidence here in the running game. Aiden Hope will hold. Kegley is the deep snapper. And the PAT try by number 99, Grady Jessup. And that's, yeah, the holder couldn't handle it. Ball slipped and PAT is unsuccessful, and there you see the weather affecting the special teams. And it's a 13-0 derby start here as we got five and a half to go before Hyvee at the half. There's Hubbard, and a lot of room. Great blocking up front by that derby O-line. Now watch the holder here, number 18, Aiden Hope. You can see good catch just Loses the ball, transferring it down to the ground. Doesn't and, really leave yeah, the kicker a lot of... Yeah, the kicker had to pause because the ball wasn't ready to go and then restart, and he missed it. So it'll be a miss PAT. 12 plays, 85 yards, and Hubbard with the uh, seven-yard rushing touchdown, but a very effective drive. We saw Brain used as a receiver. We saw him score that rushing touchdown back in the first quarter, but... You can see he is their big star, the uh, tight end for Derby. Well, three for three on third down conversions. And I'm not certain any of those were under six yards, so Derby able to convert, keep the drive alive. Able to use that momentum to score second touchdown of the game. If Gardner's going to get back into it, they're going to need a big offensive possession here. Randy Singleton, the deep man for the Jessup Derby kick. 6A state championship game for 2023. Kevin White, Bethany Bowman, and Johnny Beck. Snowy Emporia, Kansas on the campus of ESU. This is a short directional kick fielded by an up man. And good special teams work after a return of about six yards. That was a Randy Singleton. 
And now we can see the flex bone coming out. And here are a lot of theories on how you deal with a flex bone. You want to get them behind the sticks. So first down's key, but getting them down on the scoreboard as well is another big key that well, you're gonna add, teams like to do, but the gardner edwards has been really good this year. Well, and you're going to add 15 yards here. Is, looks like a derby player is going to get an unsportsmanlike after the play. Flag down. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number nine, Gardner Edgerton, 15 yards from the end of the run. So, I thought it was on the Derby guys. It looked like they were John back and forth. If anything, it the should officials have been still a, haven't decided yet. Now that might not have been the right call. The officials are still talking about it. And I think he's going to correct the call. Correction. That unsportsmanlike conduct penalty is on number eight on Derby. So there it is. It's on Derby. And it's going to be on Fannin still. And now Coach Clark can't be happy as they tack on a 15-yard penalty. Yeah, and it's just a guy just continuing to, to jaw as they're going off the field. And the referee kind of told him, hey, get back to your huddle. And you see number eight here. He just starts kind of dancing in the middle of the field. So instead of the 30, they get it at their own 45. Butash, cutback run. Butash, secondary and more. First down run is a big one by Dylan Butash. And as he takes it into Derby territory, 23 yard run by Butash. And two hands on the ball, finally written down on the play. Yeah, you like that was Jackson with the stop. Yeah, and you like to see that taking care of the football. It just takes one guy punching that ball out behind you. And now the quarterback keeping it, has room to the outside. Braven Powell turning on the speed on a cutback. And he has another first down run. And here come the Trailblazers here as the penalty. Gets them good field position, and now back-to-back big-time runs by the fullback and the Blazers quarterback. And you see Powell stay patient with the fake. Able to get those blockers out front, and then you see the speed by Powell getting it up the sideline there for another big-time gain. In the red zone. And we'll get a derby timeout. Timeout. Derby. That is their second, so each team with one remaining. Coming up, Hy-Vee at the half. Numbers and highlights brought to you by your employee-owned Hy-Vee stores, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. Shout out to our crew working in this snowstorm here in beautiful Emporia, Kansas. There is a Darren Graham. Uh, I'm guessing, what, three or four layers for uh, D. Graham there. And by the way, it's his birthday, so happy birthday to him. Snowstorm, multiple layers, getting us the good shots here on the Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week. First and 10 from the 14, and now here's Butash upended. He got upended by his own offensive lineman there who was on the ground trying to block there and just kind of hurtled him, fell forward for a, a short gain. It was. Remington Carpenter that was laying on the ground. I think he was the guy that kind of upended his own back there. Was, yep, he was right there, and he just had to go over the top of number 69. So gain of two, second down and eight. Trailblazers need points before halftime. As they'll run it with their fullback. This is Butash. Flex Bone is known more of for their running. This team will throw it a little more than some of the other Flex Bones that you see with Hutch and St. Thomas Aquinas and Campus. Now a big down and distance, third down and four. Blazers needing points before halftime. Quarterback keeping it, running to the outside, and it's gonna be about a half yard, maybe a yard short. Raven Powell 
Yeah, we'll see where they spot it, but I think they're going to be a. Yeah, it's a full yard. Uh, yeah. Fourth down and one. Powell looking to the sidelines for the call. The offensive coordinator is up in the press box. Dustin Delaney, he's in the booth next to us. So. Johnny, go ahead and knock on the window and see what, what play he's going to call here. I'd keep it with my quarterback here as he's had a successful drive running the football. And he does call his own number. Backing his way, fighting into the end zone. It's a Gardner Edgerton touchdown. Five yards spinning, whirling, snow. Powell scores. Gardner Edgerton on the board. 18th rushing touchdown of the year by the GE quarterback. So it's a fourth down conversion. More importantly, it's six on the board for number six as Ashton Adrian, senior PAT guy out of the hold of Hawkinson. So these will be big, these PATs in a snowstorm. And it's up and good by the kicker Adrian, who's going to play soccer at Graceland. And now the home side has something to cheer about as Gardner Edgerton on the scoreboard. And remember that drive started really good field position for Gardner and they took full advantage of it as we saw a lot of Braven Powell on that on that drive. And that drive started with a 15 yard penalty on special teams by Derby. So they normally would have started at the 30 but instead they started at the 45 and they took advantage with the rushing touchdown of five yards by Powell. Like it's picked up again. These guys on the field working nonstop, just trying to keep the, the yard lines. As we go back to that drive, we talked about the short field. Six plays, 55 yards, 2:45 off the clock. Again, sticking with it with Raven Powell as he finishes off that drive with the five-yard touchdown run. Six A state championship game, Emporia State University, Welsh Stadium. Snow been falling since about noon. Lighter earlier, and now it's really coming down here. Emporia, Kansas. Here's the run up in the boot by Adrian. And this will be the young freshman who they're very excited about, Arius Finley. This guy is a uh, weight room guru and he's only a ninth grader as we send it down to Bethany for a score update. Thanks Kevin. Yep, I have a couple updates for you in the other state title games in class 4A at St. Thomas Aquinas over Andover Central 21 to 7 in the second quarter and in class 5A in Pittsburgh which I'm hearing doesn't have a single drop of snow right now. Mill Valley just trailing a little bit to Cape and Mount Carmel 23 to 20. The Crusaders with a slight edge over Mill Valley in the second quarter. So we'll keep you updated on those scores but uh, we'll get back to this one here. A great one in Emporia. Of course Mill Valley looking for five straight state titles and most people know the story that Joel Appleby and Brandon Clark, the Derby head coach, are cousins and best buddies. They talk almost every day as Hubbard will run it out for a, a gain of five on the play. And if you've ever watched uh, these teams practice, I've seen Derby practice and Mill Valley practice very similar. And they've had similar success. Both have won six state titles, both looking for number seven today as here's the coach's son with a big time run. Braxton Clark taking it into Gardner Edgerton territory and a first down for the Panthers. And it looked like the left side of that Gardner Edgerton D line just kind of got squeezed inside and Braxton Clark's going to take full advantage of the open running space there. 17 yard run. And now here's Hubbard. Short gain is tackler is Saviston and Hubbard just kind of sits down on there was some extracurriculars after the play and we have a flag down. Well it looked like the Gardner defender was just kind of having fun out there trying to punch the ball out and the Derby offensive lineman did not like it. And comes in with the uh, shove at the end. 
referees did not hesitate to throw the flags. As Kirk Simone is your referee for the 6A state championship game. Convention getting the fans a little irritated. They want a decision here as they're sitting in a snowstorm. As these guys working hard in the snow as well, trying to get the call right. We have two fouls on the play, one on each team. Dead ball, personal con foul. Personal foul. Those off penalties were offset. So no yardage walk off and let's take another look here Johnny uh, we've seen some pushing and shoving after the plays there's the tackle and then right yeah he's he saw Dewey trying to punch the ball out of Hubbard and uh, the offensive lineman uh, Max Robinson the left tackle says don't do that to my running back here we go second down and long pass to the side and diving attempt and it's a catch coming back and making a nice catch there was John Lujan the junior wide receiver fighting the snow and able to get his gloves under it and make the catch for a first down 22 yards on the play as here's Hubbard on a cutback and oh man he got smoked on the play by Dewey but it's a big time passing play Clark to Lujan the wide receiver as we go back to the Pass play to Lujan. Kind of looked live like he didn't keep that ball in his belly the whole time. Right there, you kind of see that ball on the ground, but. Ball definitely moved. And they call it a catch, and now Hubbard is blown up. Ball is blown dead. That is not a live ball. And it'll just be a uh, tackle for a loss as the D line really shut down Hubbard. And that's Spencer Easley doing the. Uh, Tough work on the defensive line for the Blazers. I don't think they're going to get a holding up front. Yeah, there is a flag down. Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty for the previous spot. Still second down. And Jesse Owens, he's been talking to those referees about keeping a closer eye on those derby offensive linemen, maybe getting a little bit of jersey. and They... Uh, Caught one of those guys up front and it's gonna push Derby back now. Last spot tackle was by uh, Mark Debiak, the Sam linebacker. His dad played with Jesse Owen back in his days at Latham North. Former Buck Buchanan award winner was Debiak's father, Jeff. Now second down and long with the penalty yardage. Floating it down the middle, incomplete. Flag down in the secondary as this is going to be a pass interference coming up on Porter defending against Rudy. Porter got there just a hair too soon and referee right over the top throws the flag immediately and they kind of bail Derby out here as they had second and long there. on the defense, 15-yard penalty for the previous spot. We play second down. Remember, it's not an automatic first down on pass interference, so it's going to get a lot of that penalty yardage back. It's not going to be second and five. Derby still does have one timeout left. Keep it on the ground, Hubbard. Can't break away as Dewey had him by the legs and ripped his shoe off. And he'll clean the snow off his socks before they reapply the shoe. Good luck trying uh, to yeah, get that shoe Yeah, back the shoes on. are 
Yeah, it's frozen and probably super tight, and he's going to have to leave the field, and now the freshman Finley will come in. As he's got a flat tire as he goes to the sidelines. Yeah, he didn't want to pick his shoe up and jog off to the sideline. He wanted to make sure to keep that sock as dry as he could. It was a first down run. That's the important thing by Hubbard as he leaves the field. Now pass to the end zone, and the ball is juggled and dropped. Lujan could not make the catch in the back corner of the end zone. And it'll be second down and 10. Ball on the 12-yard line just before halftime. Yeah, Clark puts it right where he needs to, right over the defender's hand. And that receiver just trying to find his, his footing, trying to get those feet down, not able to haul the pass in. Saw Lujan with a nice catch earlier in the drive. And now second down and 10. Panthers. On the move, leading by six before halftime. Play action. And going to the tight end in the back of the end zone, and Brame can't hang on as the ball looked like it went through the uprights after it deflected off the hands of Brame in the back of the end zone. Not sure who the defender was for Gardner, but he was able to, to get his fingertips on it, and Brame not able to catch it off the deflection. Great job there contesting that pass. As Brame's been a Pretty much uncoverable, right? For this Gardner secondary. Third down and 10. Ball at the 12. Derby trying to get points before halftime. Has one timeout left. Clark, empty set, the left-hander. Under pressure and sacked. Williams finished him off. Looked like Dibiak made the first contact, but Big Isaiah gets his second sack of the game. Well, that's a big sack there as it kind of puts Derby at a field goal position. Not sure they were going to attempt one anyway, but definitely not going to do it now. It's a fourth and long. So the big sack will move it back. That was a loss of seven on the sack, so the ball will be at the 19. So you're looking, what, about a 35, 36-yard attempt in a driving snowstorm, and the long for the season by Jessup is 26. Yeah, and, you know, you're kicking into a little bit of a wind and wet, cold conditions. That ball's not going to travel as far as it normally does, and it doesn't look like anybody's going out there to clear space for the kicker, so I would expect Derby to just go for it here on fourth down. And if you're Gardner... This will be a big time momentum builder if you can get the stop here as you just scored on offense and now your defense can come up with a big stop. Going into halftime only down six. Well, I don't see 99 in white. That was the final timeout for the Derby Panthers. 99 in white is Grady Jessup, so they will go. And fourth down and 17 yards. Motion by Lujan, quarterback rolling to his strong side. Now turning and throwing back to Brame, who's open. He can't make the catch. Five yards deep in the end zone. Coverage by Cameron Porter, but that got on the body of the big tight end, but he couldn't reel it in. Well, there's a great route. It's kind of a delayed route as you see Brame. Kind of dummies like he's going to block, and Clark knows he's just got to let him clear the field, but Porter does a good job of Yeah, he got his hand making inside up. there. That is a great play by Porter. See right there, the high point in that ball. Number one job for any defensive back. Just force the incomplete pass. Ball over on downs to Gardner Edgerton now with under 30 seconds to go. They'll take a knee and go into the halftime down 13 to seven at the halftime break of the 2023 6A state championship in Snowy Emporia. Coach Clark's team, that uh, rushing touchdown by Brain and Hubbard, but missed the PAT. And Gardner Edgerton got a fourth down touchdown run by Powell, their quarterback. And their PAT was good. As the fans trying to stay warm and out of the snowstorm. We got this. It's a 13-7 lead for the Derby Panthers looking for their seventh state title in the last 11 years. It would be their eighth overall as far as their school history. 
So they are the current 6A power trying to get one in the snow in Emporia. Coach, it's been hard for anybody to get anything going with this weather. How do you uh, think your guys have stepped up and what do you want to see them continue to do to put more points on the board? Uh, we told our kids we got our snow plays and our rain plays. And, uh, you know, I mean, we've got a couple drop balls. You kind of you don't want to expect that, but that's, that's kind of how it goes when it's slippery. But uh, our defense is doing phenomenal. Um, our offense, we've been moving the ball, been running the ball. And then we get ourselves in bad positions. So uh, we just need to clean up stuff we're doing to ourselves. Anything else in the locker room you want to make as an adjustment? We'll make some adjustments. You know, I mean, it is a snow game. The footing's pretty bad, but uh, it's a heck of a time. I mean, this snow is beautiful. It's state championship week. Couldn't ask for anything better. Okay, good luck. Stay warm. All right, thanks, Bethany. 13-7, your halftime score in the 6A state championship game. Derby on top and coming back with Ivy at the half here on Spectrum News. Winner is the 6A state champions for 2023 as Jessup has it on the tee. Singleton, the deep man for the Trailblazers. They want him to get the football. Let's see if Panthers want to kick it to him. They do not. And they'll kick it to Snipe, the youngster, and good special teams work by Derby as he the first touches with the sophomore, Nemo Snipe. He's got a pretty good average coming in at over 28 yards for a kick return. And now we get the flex bone offense. First touches, third quarter, Braven Powell. Boutash will be the fullback. Ball at the 24 yard line, first and 10, GE. Butash, pull back maybe a yard to the 25 as the dogs, as they call them in Derby. They're doing a good job on that D line as that was the sophomore Bolin, kid that was playing on their offensive line, but then John Gadwood broke his ankle early in the season and they said, we need big number 60 on our D line. So they switch sides and he is their nose guard in their 3-4 defense. Late substituting by Gardner Edgerton. As you see Max Nichols checking in as a tight end. So a good blocker on the end of the offensive line. And now Powell trying to run the football out of that mess. And maybe got a yard on the play as back just reading things and calling his own number. He has the lone rushing touchdown for Gardner Edgerton of five yards. Yeah, and see the penetration up front by Derby. It's not allowing those blockers to set that edge and see all the green helmets surrounding the quarterback there. He's doing a really good job of gang tackling. Third down, right. seven yards. And now motion. We saw the left tackle uh, James move early. Dead ball, ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. So maybe there was another player, not just James. I think a wide receiver moved early. Yeah. There you see the movement on the tackle. So be third down and still need 12. That's the key in stopping this flex ball, and you want to get them behind the sticks. That's what coaches say on paper. They'll swing it out to Butash, breaks a tackle, and will not get the first down as he's run out by Indelacio, Koa, the Mike linebacker. You see him just kind of escape out of the backfield there. He thought maybe he had a little bit of running room, but. We talked about footing being a big issue, not able to turn the corner and get upfield. More than likely, Gardner's going to punt this football away. Yeah, it's fourth down and six. Powell, their quarterback, also serves as their punter. Middlebrook, solo safety near midfield. And they kick it away from Middlebrook. He'll get under it. And 
make the return for about three or four yards as the punt went 28. And three yards on the return by Middlebrook. And now we see Derby and their offense at over 200 yards. Two touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns of 18 and seven yards in the uh, first half. Brain got the first, Hubbard got the second. And they'll start in good field position as they'll have the ball at the 48 in their own. Braxton Clark, the quarterback, Hubbard to his left in the backfield. And now the ball is juggled by the quarterback and he's able to maintain possession. He got whacked on the play as he reached down to pick it up. I wasn't for sure he was gonna get uh, his hands on that cleanly, but he's able to secure it and then he Took a big hit here. Yeah, he's fortunate. It, it right there, I was like, oh, whoa, hit. whoa. He didn't have it, but he did secure it. But they'll lose yardage on the play. Second down and 16. Quarterback option, Hubbard. And he's upended. After a, a short gain. Hubbard, the leading rusher in the game. But nice uh, play on the secondary. They come up and make a nice stop. It's got to be one of the Porter twins, isn't it? Yeah, you saw Dibiak. He had the quarterback, gave him a nice little shot there. Dibiak is the king in the quarterback hurries. Now it's third down. Still need 13. Pass over the middle is caught, and that's Rudy, but he'll be shy of the first down after a gain about six yards on the completion. Colton Rudy, their top receiver, along with Brame. And it's going to be fourth down and nine. Just a simple crossing right here, seeing if you can't get underneath the coverage and maybe turn it upfield. But talked about Coach Owens putting an emphasis on doing a better job tackling, as you see right there. First man available brings him down. That was for sure a Porter twin. There's Eli and Cameron in the secondary. Jessup in punt formation on fourth down and nine. Right near the midfield area. And he's able to get it away. Flag is down, Singleton lets it roll. It goes down near the five yard line. And this is a very good punt, 45 yards, but a flag back by the punter. Kirk Simone leading this state championship crew here in Emporia today. It's going to be only a five yarder. That's the signal to the sidelines. I think you can only and do. Uh, they don't want it, so they want the penalty outcome, and that was a very good one all the way down to the five yard line. So great punt by Jessup. He's been the kicking hero in their last two wins in the state playoffs. A couple of game-winning field goals against Manhattan and Washburn Rule. A 45-yard punt that pins Gardner Edgerton deep in their own territory. With seven and a half to go in the third quarter. And Trailblazers trailing by six. So backed up will be the flex bone. Butash trying to get his footing set as he clears away area on the field. He is the fullback behind the quarterback. Quarterback keeping it. And Indelacio, who's Hawaiian, making the stop. They just call him Koa. And makes the stop after a nice gain on a uh, first down run. Four yards, second down and six. A little bit of breathing room there as they were backed up. Five yard line, so. We've seen this team throw it deep in their own territory. We saw a, some nice catches back in the first half by Grant Ellis. Do they want to do that here? Well, they're going to go with the run with Butash for a uh, short gain. Hopper there and also Neptune all in the stop for the Panther defense.
Neptune on the play. Hopper was there for the uh, help up. And now it's third down and four. We've got a guy with the face mask. Yeah. And an equipment timeout. Officials timeout for equipment <laughs> on the offense. Not sure I've seen that before. Get him a new helmet and get the tools out to, as James saying, my face mask is loose. <laughs> Unsafe working conditions here on the offensive line. Yep. So we got him a new helmet. And now big down and distance, third down and four. And Powell calling his own number, and it's close. I think they're going to give it to yeah, him. Yeah, he got right to the line to gain. Let's see how they position this in the snowfall amounts. It is a first down. But he took a hard hit right at the end of this run, right there by Pascal, the Will linebacker. But he converts on third down and four. You see him fall forward there, picking up that extra yard. Again, here's Powell trying to get to the outside, but stumbles. Not much gain there as Baker there shut him down. The DB for Derby. Austin Weithrich is the defensive coordinator at Derby High School. Yeah, beginning of the game, the field was just a little bit slick. Now you're trying to run through a few inches of snow. You got to make sure you're picking your feet up. See a bunch of these guys slipping and sliding on this drive. Toss sweep, Butash, and he is blown up on the play. Great play by Baker from the secondary as he went down low and upended the fullback for Gardner Edgerton, and it's a tackle for a loss. And it's gonna leave him third down and long. Baker's made a couple plays behind the line of scrimmage on those stretch plays. Well, the word on the recruiting street is this guy's a big time player, number five. Brame's a big time player. These guys are potential D1 prospects. For sure, Brame. But they love Baker as a prospect, as a DB. Quarterback hit as he throws, and too long, incomplete. As they were looking for Hawkinson down the field, their ex receiver. And great coverage there by Fannin Steele. So they tried to go uh, with a deep ball and missed. And it's going to be fourth down and 13. You see Gardner trying to get the ball down the field here. Good pressure up the middle by Derby. Powell kind of has to get rid of it just a little bit too soon. Baker also had the uh, coverage as well. And now Powell will have to punt it after a kind of an errant snap. Middlebrook going to let this hit. And it'll trickle across midfield to the 48-yard line. 41-yard punt and some tough conditions. And now Derby will take the football near midfield, holding on to a six-point lead here late third quarter. As the snow continues to fall in Emporia, it started around noon. It's been uh, arrived on site. No snow, and now say it's got to be around three to four inches. Temperatures in the mid 30s. 6A state championship game. Winner gets the state crown. End around Hubbard. Hubbard to the outside and he is quickly wrapped up. That is Porter. That is Cameron Porter. I say is probably one of the strongest guys on the team and he had that red well. And Hubbard really didn't get much on the play as he tried to get to the edge with his speed, but Porter beat him to the punch and makes a nice stop. And really, a, maybe a half yard gain on this play. That's a good open field stop. Well, the defenders, you know, they've got to make sure they're chopping their feet, breaking down, not allowing any cutbacks. Porter with the big tackle there. And the quarterback calls his own number, Clark. Nice gain. Don't sleep on this guy. He's got a great left hand, but he, as far as his passing, but he'll get uh, he'll get some yardage on the ground. He's had one 100-yard game, four yards per carry, seven touchdowns, and now he sets his team up at third down and four. And staying on schedule, down in distance. 
Third and manageable here for Derby. Don't necessarily have to put the ball in the air. Quarterback read option. And now Clark just going to hold on to it and run backwards and lose yardage on the play. Saviston escorts him out, but uh, Clark saw something he did not like there and went backwards and did not pitch it to the uh, freshman. Said, I'm going to just hold on to this, and Saviston will take him out of bounds for a loss. It'll be fourth down and nine. And the punting unit coming up with Jessup, who had a nice punt the last time, over 40 yards. And another good punt. Fair catch called for and taken in at near the 17-yard line. That was Randy Singleton. This one 35 yards, no return. And now Gardner Edgerton will get it back here. Under three to play in your third quarter. The elements affecting these offenses. These teams average nearly 40 points per game, both of them during the regular season. But you got to tip your caps. These defenses also very good for both these squads. Not giving up too many points. So Here we go. Ball at the 17. First and 10. And now early movement. Looks like the sophomore, the nose guard, Bolin. Dead ball. Encroachment on the defense. Five-yard penalty. So first down. So first and five. Well, let's see if Gardner... Tries to take a shot downfield here, see if they can't catch this Derby defense in a run situation. Well, Hawkinson is their big play guy. First and five, pitch it out. One of the uh, wingbacks around. This is Griffin Martin. And it'll be just a little bit uh, shy of the first down. No, they say it is a first down. He got enough. Beg your pardon. First down. GE is Griffin Martin. Showed some good vision on this play. Got a block there. Nice block on the edge and takes advantage for a first down run. Here's Butash up the middle. That's through the snow and down the hashes and that is a big time gain of some eight yards. And the ground game starting to kick in now here for GE in the second half. And if Gardner can get that play going, that's just going to set them up. Keep drives alive. It's picking up eight yards on first down. Simple run play right up the middle of the field. Powell back to throw. Has a man open. That's Hawkinson over the shoulder catch. Colton Hawkinson gets behind the defense and will score. As it goes, 65 yards, and Hawkinson, their big play wide receiver, strikes in the third quarter, and it'll tie the ball game at 13 apiece. When you felt like it was coming, maybe it was going to be on that first and five, but save it a couple plays, and just sneaks behind the defenders, and Powell with a good throw. Good catch by Hawkinson. And he'll take a knee, and now he becomes a very important player in a PAT hold in these snowy conditions. Here's Adrian to give Gardner Edgerton their first lead of the game here in the third quarter. Snap down, kick up, it is good. Gardner Edgerton, 14, Derby 13. Number four, the X receiver with his fourth receiving touchdown of the year. Again, you see it time and time again. All the window dressing in the backfield. Defenders, get their eyes caught in the backfield. Hawkinson just kind of slips up the sideline. And again, Powell throws a perfect pass. Some really tough elements here. And Gardner able to take the lead in this game by a point. 14th touchdown pass for Powell, who has a rushing touchdown in the game. 65 yards on a three-play, 83-yard drive. Hawkinson, a big play wide receiver, does it again for GE. 
Well, we saw field possession game start the second half. And felt like Gardner just kept getting pushed back and back, but able to not only flip the field, but a big time scoring drive there. Trying to get a spot for the kicking tee is Adrian, the Gardner Edgerton kicker. Like they've got uh, their two running backs, Finley and Hubbard, deep back, and they're hovering around the 15 yard line. They're expecting a short kick here. And this one squib down the field, and it'll be picked up by the freshman. And that's Finley. He's got lightning speed and a nice return. This guy is a name for the future. Arius Finley, only a ninth grader. And I mean, this guy is a super strong weight room guy, but the next big star at running back uh, to follow the likes of Dylan Edwards and Derek Hubbard, uh, keep the name in your mind, Arius Finley. I told Johnny, as a ninth grader, he can squat 400, bench 300. Compare that to Kevin Wyke as a ninth grader. 90 pounds could bench 90 pounds. I thought that was an accomplishment. They said if you could bench your weight, you were strong. Here we go. Hubbard to the outside. Makes one man miss. The second man does not miss. And that is Eli Porter. Those Porters, they are uh, sure tacklers in the secondary for the Trailblazers. Yeah, they're physical out on the outside. There's the two twins right there. Seven and two. Yeah, you see there. Downhill mentality, not afraid of contact. Drive Hubbard out of bounds. Second down and seven. After the great return by the freshman. Here's Clark to throw, has plenty of time, looks deep middle to his big tight end. He's well covered, incomplete. Brain had a blue suit draped all over himself there. As great secondary coverage. My, the Blazers. Who was that, Johnny? Is hard to tell over yeah. the top. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that was Cameron Porter. So Eli, the earlier play, Cameron. Porter twins coming up big here in the second half for Gardner Edgerton. Now third down and seven as the home side, the Gardner Edgerton side, making a lot of noise. And now we got a flag on Derby. Dead ball, full start on the offense, five yard penalty, still third down. There's the fans, the cowbells, you can hear them all the way up here in the press box. But they're raising their voices. Fighting the snowstorm, trying to stay warm and trying to get their first ever football state championship at Gardner Edgerton today. Imploring their defense on third down and 11. Clark back to pass, pressured, sets up the screen to Hubbard. Hubbard to the edge, but run out. And he'll be uh, shy of the uh, first down. It's Saviston, the linebacker that got him out. Boy, he's able to get to the first down stake. It's going to be a fourth down coming up here for Derby, number 45, as they draw the defenders in. But Saviston, Kindler kind of ran him there, and then it was Saviston to finish him off. So here is a big play in your ball game. Yeah, I give a lot of credit to Kindler there. He didn't, didn't bite on anything, kind of stayed home. Able to run Hubbard out of bounds. Fourth down and four, trailing by one. Derby on the plus side of the 50 at the 43-yard line. And now we'll get a whistle, and a flag is down. Play clock run out. Dead ball. Delay a game. On the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. So that one might be by design to give the punter more room, Johnny, you think? I don't think in this, in these field conditions that you're wanting to give the other team any, any positive yards. Maybe having a tough time getting a play call in there on fourth and short. It looks like they're gonna keep the offense out on the field here. 
They elected not to call a timeout to save the five yards. And now another flag is down. Dead ball. Encroachment on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. So they were going to go for it, but after back to back penalties, Derby decides to send the punter out, and the Clarks will talk it over on the sideline. Dad and son. Jessup's done a good job of punting in the second half. Singleton. Standing at the 20 yard line to return this punt. Wind at his back, not strong. Big snowflakes at his back. Very big, and now another get flag another, is down. Another delay of game here as the play clock was at zero. Dead ball, full start. On the offense, five yard penalty. Still full down. So penalties starting to add up. Coach Clark's team is now Jessup backed up even more. Now Singleton floating around the 27 yard line to return this punt. He is a speedy, dangerous player for Gardner Edgerton. Jessup has it blocked, and the ball is on the field. Jessup will cover it up, and the Trailblazers come up with a punt block. And I want to say, yeah, it was Mark Debiak with the long arms, and he reached out and blocked the punt of Jessup. Coming off the left edge here, Johnny. Yeah, two punts ago, he almost got it. He got the running into the punter, but there, again, able to get that left arm out, taking a little bit too much time on that operation in Debiak. Comes up with the huge special teams play is now. Gardner's going to have best field starting field position of the game. Well, you got the penalties, then you get the punt block. Short field now for Gardner Edgerton trying to add to a one point lead under a minute to go in your third quarter of the 6A state championship game. And now we'll get a timeout for Gardner Edgerton. Play clock was down. They didn't want to lose valuable yardage and now coach Owen is wondering if uh, they uh, yeah they setting the ball up too quick my guys aren't ready to go uh, just wanted a clarification for the official as you see how heavy the snow is coming down the flakes are huge and again we want to say a big thank you to our crew out in this uh, miserable snowstorm working hard on their Thanksgiving weekend, there's, there's Paul, obviously cheering for a derby with that green jacket on. Oh, I, just kidding, Paul, sorry about that. Jeez, I didn't think he would take it so personally. <laughs> get me beat up. Yeah, 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 I didn't want to get the Blazer fan. There's some Tristan, one of our guys with the camera. Boy, it's, and of course, Bethany, she told me he had three layers on. He layers of warm clothes as Braven Powell calls his own number, spinning his way. Ball security going to be big here. We saw an earlier fumble back in the first half on a mismatched mesh point between the fullback and the quarterback. But not a bad gain, three yards. And they don't want to run another play as that'll be the end of the third quarter. They'll run their next play in the fourth quarter, 14-13 on a 65-yard touchdown pass. Powell to Hawkinson. One-point game in the 6A state championship in Snowy Emporia. Ready for the start of the fourth quarter, Snowy Emporia, and here's Braven Powell into the secondary. Braven Powell will take it to the house. Touchdown, Gardner Edgerton. His second rushing touchdown of the game. Big play to start the fourth quarter by the Trail Blazers quarterback. Twenty seven yards on the distance. And 
the snow-covered Trailblazer fans loving it here in Emporia with the another important PAT pending. Hawkinson is an important guy in the hold. And now we've got officials timeout. Dead ball, encroachment on the defense, half the distance to the goal. Oh, I thought it was a timeout, it's a penalty. Now do they go for a two-point conversion as they'll move it half the distance from the normal spot, Johnny? I mean, this is a big time decision if you decide to go for the it. The offense is like coming back out. To. It's gonna make it a two-score game here as we see offensive coordinator right next to us making sure that he gets the right play called. And here we go, two-point conversion try at 20 to 13. You can make it 22-13. And now we're gonna get a timeout and Coach Owen is not happy. Let's go back to the uh, rushing touchdown by the junior quarterback, Braven Powell. And this is how we start the fourth quarter. See Powell, has been pretty patient with that run, but right there he saw the running lane and just takes advantage of it. Able to get to that second, third level. Pretty much untouched. You see the great job up front by the Gardner offensive lineman. Yes, and James, Big Surge, Whitley, Matlock, Moore done a good job blocking up front against a good D-line for Derby. And now we'll see after a penalty on Derby, they got an encroachment penalty, and now it's half the distance. So the ball at the one and a half, they will go for a two-point conversion and try to go up by nine, Johnny. That's big, that's a big point differential if they can convert. Quarterback keeping it, diving, and he is in for a two-point conversion. Braven Powell on the reverse pivot, and he takes it in, and that's big points. That's now 22 points for Gardner Edgerton as it's 22-13 early fourth quarter. Yeah, even though they called the timeout, there was no hesitation to go for it once Derby had the encroachment penalty and more of the same, just giving that ball to Powell and let him follow those big guys up front. He falls forward for the one yard, two point conversion, but makes it a two score game now for Gardner Edgerton. That is the big point. That's why they decided to go for the two. Last year in the state championship game, a two-point conversion try came up short by Butash. And they lost to Manhattan in heartbreaking fashion, 21 to 20. This year they convert a two-point conversion after the 27-yard touchdown run by Powell. He got the two-point conversion as well. Fans making the hour and a half trip from Gardner. Loving life here, early fourth quarter. Still a lot of time left to play in your state championship game. And Braxton Clark and the passing offense will be coming out. And a little short directional kick. And this will be fielded by uh, Hopper, the D lineman. Nice. Special teams play as coming down and making the stop was uh, Darion Williams, a young sophomore. He has a lot of upside. Special teams, so many things you talk to the coaches about, but every play mattering, everything magnified. But I don't know if they thought when I talked to him on a Monday and Tuesday, there was going to be a major snowstorm here in Emporia. They just said it was going to be cold. <laughs> but playing in the elements, a big deal here. As here's Hubbard, gets to the edge with his speed and gets a nice gain on first down before he's run out at the Gardner sideline. Going to get about eight, it looks like. It looked like he was just going to cut it up the field, but it's a good job of reading that block on the outside. Going to get a pretty good pick up there on first down of eight yards. Here's Hubbard again. Not much doing here. Big Isaiah just swallows him up. Isaiah goes 6'6", 260, the junior defensive lineman, number 96. And 
you see the blue jerseys just holding the line of scrimmage. Not allowing Hubbard to get to that second, third level. Hubbard just got a face full of snow there. As he was taken down. Now third down and one. Here's Hubbard again. Lowers his head and shoulders and gets the first down. He'll get a couple of yards gained on the play. Hubbard, the leading rusher in the game, over 100 yards and a touchdown. Clark finding his tight end, but he can't hold on. Brame can't make the catch. Singleton and Porter had the coverage. And uh, I think it was Porter that got his hand in there as they kind of bracket coverage him here. Well, just couldn't hang on. It was a little behind him. We've seen Brame make those catches before, the Division I prospect. Second down and 10, Derby trailing by nine here in the fourth quarter. Empty set for the left-handed quarterback, Clark. Avoiding the rush, turning on the speed as he'll run for a first down as he went out right at the first down stake near midfield. Interesting to see where they're going to mark him. Let's see, yeah. I'd Live, it looked like he was about a yard short, but they're definitely going to give him the first down here. As you he was just, see, I think he tried to just go to the shoveled area because he knew that was midfield, and that's where they spot it. And they say it's a little bit short. So be third down and less than a yard. Yeah, I think they're going to get a measurement here and end up giving the first down. Is yeah. okay now. They do advance the uh, chains and it is a first down at midfield. Three receivers to the right of the quarterback Hubbard in the backfield. Play action Clark throwing a fade to Rudy and it's broken up. Great coverage. Yes. That was uh, Eli Porter with the coverage on Rudy. And do we have a flag down? There's a flag down. Looked like really good coverage down the field. Hard to tell who it's going to be on here. We have two penalties on the defense. Holding, that penalty's declined. Pass interference. That penalty is accepted. 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. Yeah, good luck seeing the holding in the snow, but you see there at the end of the play, that was a good job by both guys just fighting for the ball, but Gardner unfortunate. The big thing, Johnny, it's a 15-yard penalty, so it moves the ball from midfield down to the 35. And a new set of downs. Lujan in motion. Clark all day to throw. Now goes over the middle and misses. That is Bledsoe reaching his right arm out. Can't make the catch. Second down and 10. Well, you kind of get into that scramble drill, and guys are having a hard time stopping and working back to the quarterback. You see Lujan almost loses his footing going in motion. And and you see the blocking up front by Derby, giving Clark all the time in the world, almost able to complete that pass over the middle. But both, both sides are having a hard time making any sort of sudden stop and change of direction right now. Second down pass. Maybe quarterback going to take off. And he'll get it right back to the line of scrimmage before he's uh, taken down. Dibiak was there. He also uh, Spencer Easley on the D line. And it'll be third down and 10. Clark couldn't find a receiver. Great coverage in the secondary. And then it was Savaston and Dibiak and uh, Easley. Yeah, Clark did the right thing. He didn't want to take a sack and make it. More of 
of a tough situation than it already is, but four down territory here for Derby. Clark going deep middle to his tight end. No, Brame got it one hand on it, couldn't reel it in. Again, the coverage very good by Porter, and the pass was a little wide, and now it'll be fourth down and 10. And it looks like Derby's gonna run a play as they're trailing by nine here in the fourth quarter. Well, that one's... Just right off the fingertips and, you know, as a receiver. Yeah, the receivers and tight end coaches say if you can touch it, you should be able to catch it. That was the rule I grew up, but I, you know, I'm an old geezer. I grew up in the 1970s. So. Fourth down and 10. Big play for Derby. Quarterback in trouble. Directing traffic, throwing down the field, and the catch is made. What a play. Colton Rudy comes back and makes a first down catch covered by Eli Porter. So Derby coming up big on fourth down and 10 as they're able to convert. Yeah, and you see Clark able to keep his eyes down the field, keeps, keeps his footing, almost falls down and then throws a strike to Rudy. Good catch by Rudy. Not only knowing where the first down marker is, but able to haul that pass in for the big first down. That was a 20 yard completion. Now here's Hubbard and Hubbard inside the five yard line before he is tripped up on the play. And the quick strike derby offense. Playing with tempo. First and goal. Here's Hubbard on a cutback. Touchdown derby. Derek Hubbard. And he has his second rushing touchdown of the game. 15th of the season. And Derby right back in this ball game, still with a lot of time left. 9-12 to go in regulation. When Derby needed a needed a score on offense, able to drive the field there. The points on the board, and it looks like they're going to go for two. And we'll try a two-point conversion. Hubbard in the backfield. Play action. Clark. Again, directing traffic, ball is batted in the air, and it's an unsuccessful two-point conversion. Ball was caught out of bounds by Gardner Edgerton's Cam Porter, and will stay at 22 to 19. So a three-point lead as we go back to the Hubbard rushing touchdown. You saw the play before, Hubbard able to pick up good yardage, set himself up inside the five. A lot of white jersey hat on hats there, allowing Hubbard to go up the, right up the middle. And two point conversion here. So trying to go to Brame, just not there. And see the defensive that, player there just kind of gets between. I think that the, might be Marcos that took that one off his coconut there. That one. Well, now it's strategy time with the special teams. Do you do an onside kick, or what do you do with this, Johnny? No, I still think you can kick the ball down the field. You got nine right. minutes to go on the clock. Plenty of time. So. Plenty of time, and put a little bit of pressure on the Gardner offense here to pick up a couple first downs as back into this field position game. Well, Randy Singleton will be back. As take a look at Coach Clark, the 44-year-old head coach. Has six state titles. And his cousin, Mill Valley, Joel Appleby has six. So both of them playing for number seven today on this championship Saturday. Weather far better in Pittsburgh, Kansas, though, we're told. No snow there in Pittsburgh. And here in Emporia, three or four inches of snow, maybe more. Started at noon, and Jessup will kick it back. And again, this is a short directional kick, and it's loose there. I think Singleton uh, kind of muffed that, but able to get on that football. No, well, maybe that was another special teams player there. Looks like Bojanski came up with the football here. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that was. Oh. That was a Singleton uh, with a muff, and then Bojanski, who's the team's leading pass interceptor, able to save the possession. Hi V, proud to support Kansas City High School Athletics.
here at the 6A state championship game in Poria, Kansas. ESU, Kevin White, Bethany Bowman, Johnny Beck, our entire crew working the snowstorm in Emporia, which is the 6A state championship as Powell running quarterback Reed on the first down play and getting a couple of yards. So now they want to run this offense, manage the clock. Leading by three in the fourth quarter. So Ellis kind of going motion now. Lines up as a wing on the left side. Butash is the fullback. And this is Butash. Not much doing. Still going to need about third down. Let's call it a... Long six, it looks like, for this Gardner Edgerton team. 11 and one. Number two in the state poll as they wrapped up the regular season. Only lost week seven at home against Olathe East. Third down and six, Powell all day to throw. Wants a deep ball to Hawkinson, and he can't get it, incomplete. Double coverage there. Hawkinson looking for a flag, and you do not see one, so now it'll be fourth down and a six facing this gardner Edgerton team in their own territory. Just kind of giving this guy an opportunity to go up and get the ball. Now, Middlebrook had great coverage there. They say he's the most improved player in their secondary. The strong safety nearly got a pick. Now Powell will punt it away, and they'll rely on their defense. Here's Middlebrook letting it hit. Now, that's a big mistake. I mean, they're going to lose a little field position, but the rule is if you're not 100% sure you want to field that, and that's a 47-yard punt, but more importantly, they got that roll there, Johnny. I'm, what do you think, 10 to 12 extra yards? And, but, you know, hey, you got snow blowing in your face and uh, you're backing up. I mean, Powell hit kind of a line drive punt. It was low and out of, out of the snow and wind kind of jetted down the field. I think he said, I'm going to be uh, safe instead of sorry. And take over on the 18-yard line, down by three, seven and a half to play for a 6A state championship here in Snow Emporia. Hubbard in the backfield. He'll get the tote. Breaks it free. Hubbard, a big run before Debiak tackles him from behind, but not after a big first down run by the leading rusher in the game, Derek Hubbard. Yeah, just another chunk play here. See Hubbard takes advantage of, takes advantage of the running lane there. Hubbard closing in on 150 yards rushing in the game, and he is the game's leading rusher. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Let's get an update from Bethany Bowman. Hey, guys. For Class 4A, your state champion is St. Thomas Aquinas. They defeat Andover Central 35-7 to today in Topeka. The Saints led by head coach Randy Dryling, and they are the state champions in Class 4A. Congratulations to the Saints. Coach Dryling second with the uh, Saints. It's going to put him at nine now when you put his Hutch state championships together, all those trophies, as the flag is down. And looks like a holding penalty coming up on uh, the Derby Panthers. Yes. Looked like uh, Bojanski was signaling I was being held on the play on the Hubbard run. It was a good run, but it's coming back. Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. First down. As you see here on the outside. Yeah, you see the jersey pull on 22, Bojanski. And that's where they threw the flag at. So 
So first and 18 as they move the ball back to the 32-yard line for Clark. And his ball is knocked out of his hand. And that was Debiak. And Debiak, the edge rusher, able to knock it free, but it's covered up by the left tackle Robinson to save the possession for Derby. We've seen Debiak with the big pup block early in the third quarter, and here almost gets the strip sack and recovery. Fortunate for Derby, lineman standing right there. Max Robinson able to hop on it, but Derby's in a second and very long situation here. Now second down and 29 for Clark in the Derby offense. Pass is caught by Rudy, but he's tackled immediately. Eli Porter, solid tackling in the secondary, and it's going to be third down and a country mile still for Derby. And you see Gardner allowing the short passes. Just playing in front, making sure they come up with the tackle. Not allowing any yards after catch there for Derby. Yep, still third down and 29. And now they're going to do a gadget play, a little flea flicker action. Down the field to Rudy, and he makes the catch at midfield. And it's a first down as well. Now we got a flag down back near the line of scrimmage. But Rudy's come up with some big catches. It was a forward pass. The, the second pitch was a forward pass, which I'm not certain if that's going to be two forward passes or forward lateral. Let's see what they want to call here. It's, Derby is backing up. Here's the call. A legal forward pass, two forward passes. It's a five yard penalty for the spot. Lost it down. So it is a loss of down. That is the, the, the big thing, because it's fourth down now, and fourth down and long. Yeah, here's the first forward pass. And then obviously yeah. the second pass one down the field. Rudy with the good catch, but it's all for not. As it's now fourth down, and they're moving it to. But the walk off, the penalties just a killer today for Derby. And that was one of uh, Coach's keys. He said, We got to keep the penalties down. Derby has not. And they move it all the way back to a, a fourth down and it's like 34 yards. So it's 30 plus. And Jessup will punt inside his own five-yard line. He's near the goal line. Gardner is not sending anybody back. They are playing putt safe. And Jessup sends it down the field. Now, you, if you're blocking down there, if you're GE, and this is going to be a nice punt all the way out near midfield. And in these conditions, 35 yards on the punt by Jessup, who's done a great job. And now the Trailblazers will get it near midfield. Just over five and some change left, leading by three as we check in with Bethany. In Pittsburgh, still not a single flake of snow I'm hearing, but the Jaguars of Mill Valley taking a 55 to 37 lead over Cape and Mount Carmel. Last update, they were trailing by three. The Jaguars really putting it on now onto Cape and Mount Carmel in the 5A state title game. We start at midfield. Gardner Edgerton using the quarterback following his block and he will sit down after a gain of some six yards on the play. Well, Joel Appleby looking for five in a row, seven overall. And his contest with his uh, cousin, Brandon Clark. But you got to remember in the family, they have uh, the Leavenworth. Former uh, Leavenworth track coach, Tamara Strano, she leads that family unit. She has 10 Leavenworth girls state titles, so they're all going to be chasing Tamara, who's 
Just a tremendous person. I love talking to her in that Pioneers girls track team. And here's Powell just holding on to the back of Butash's fullback and running for a first down. Butash, number 12, getting his jersey grabbed from behind by the QB. And yeah, you see the convoy of blue jerseys there, and it's exactly what Gardner Edgerton wants to do. Keep the ball, keep the ball on the ground, picking up three, four yards a pop. So you're gonna be able to run this play clock down all the way inside of five seconds is gonna kind of hurry here as they're down to eight. Yeah, they're trying to run clock, run the ball. Here's Butash, first down. No, he'll get uh, a good gain here on a first down run. As Butash will get a nice gain. They'll say six or seven. Make it six, second down and four on that first down run by Dylan Butash. We saw Sire Padilla earlier in the year at the fullback slot. About halfway through the year, they made a change. They felt like the mesh between Powell and Butash was a little better. Butash averaging 6.8 yards per carry. He is their leading rusher at over 800 yards per, or 800 yards on the season. And now here's Powell, close to the first down, about a yard short. I thought he fell forward and picked it up, but I think they're gonna mark him about a half yard short. And again, Trying to keep the clock running and make some history in Gardner Edgerton School District. They've never won a football state championship. So close last year. And you see Powell eyeballing the play clock and then Goes on a quarterback sneak and converts it on third down and one. So move the chains. A first down run on a quarterback sneak by Braven Powell. So Derby calls a timeout here as you go back to the Powell quarterback sneak. Yeah, Powell seen uh, have a big game. He's had the uh, two rushing touchdowns and a two-point conversion. Only a, a junior. Also plays basketball at the school. Trailblazers. Uh, so close last year. And Again, you know, everybody puts that pressure on you. Oh, well, you, you got state runners up by a point. Now you got to get back to state and win it all. Well, it's a lot of talk. You still got to go out and win all those games, get through all the injuries, beat all the good opponents. And uh, this team trying to close this out and make history for their football program. This is Butash, two hands securely around the football. And now we'll get another derby timeout. I think that's their third. That is their third and final timeout. So after the three yard run, let's go back to the big special teams play. Here in the second half by uh, Mark uh, Dibiak. Just reaching out, looks like his uh, left arm and blocking it. And his team able to convert after that with a 27 yard Braven Powell quarterback rushing a touchdown. It was a penalty against the Derby line as they got encroachment and they went for two and converted it to get 22 points on the board that's where they stand now as after the 
Short run, here's Powell again. He's not going anywhere. Hopper wrapped around his body. Also Middlebrook there. And I guess Derby had another uh, timeout because they just burned the timeout on what'll be a third down. Looks like a seventh play. So the scoreboard signaling now no more timeouts for Derby. Scoreboard has one for Gardner Edgerton. If Gardner likes to keep this ball on the ground, they're going to be able to run off. They'll be able to get it inside of 140. And they'll have a decision to make on fourth down. Obviously, Derby with no timeouts left. Tall task if they do get the ball back. Be able to drive down the field. The Hale and Hardy fans cheering on their team, working their cowbells here on third down and seven. That's the Gardner Edgerton side as they try to convert on this third down and long. And the quarterback spinning his way, still fighting. He's going to be about a yard short. Now the team helping him forward and still looks like they're a little bit short on that late push. Powell lost his helmet. And he's saying, my helmet got ripped off on the play. It's going to be right at the marker. I think they're going to come out and measure this. He's going to have to leave the field because of a helmet loss. And now they're going to have to bring in a different quarterback on fourth down and one. Let's see if it was ripped off on the play, like formation. he said. There is a uh, official's timeout for a measurement. It's going to be uh, fourth down. Oh, he got it. Yeah, let's see. Yes, by the nose of the football. He did get it. Wow, that was close. Stretching out the chains in the snow, and Jesse Owens' team will have a new set of downs. That is big. Chris Marcos checking on the field. Now Hawkinson, I think he is coming in to serve as the quarterback, the wide receiver. As he's coming in for the victory formation. Colton Hawkinson, once again, the quarterback lost his helmet, so had to leave. Hawkinson can go in and take a knee. He's the holder on the PATs, and now they cannot stop the clock. And now here comes Braven Powell off the sidelines and you can feel the celebration starting to begin for the Trailblazers. Twenty two nineteen just over a minute left gonna have to snap it again with Braven Powell fans starting to feel it. They can't feel much of anything else freezing in the snow and the cold. And Derby looks like they're going to be denied. And history for Gardner Edgerton. They left heartbroken a year ago, losing in double overtime. They went for two to try to win the ball game against Manhattan. It was denied. And through the offseason, through the hot summer and all the waits, this team had to hear about being second. And now history. Gardner Edgerton going to win their first ever state championship in 6A football. Congratulations to Jesse Owen and his Trailblazers staff. Jesse was on the first Olathe North state championship winning team back in 1996 under Gene Weir. 
And now he'll bring the big trophy to Gardner Edgerton behind a 22-19 win in the snow in Emporia. Let's check in with Bethany down on the field, and she's got the quarterback, Braven Powell. Braven, you look a little emotional. Describe how this feels. First ever state title for you in Gardner Edgerton High School. Man, it's unexplainable. Last year, it all started here with our seniors last year. They built the foundation for us. When Coach O came in two years ago, that group really, nobody really was looking out for them. And in the playoffs, they uh, just showed their grit, and that's what started this team. And, all these players in this culture here. And last year, we came up short, man. Everybody counted us out last year. And uh, this year, we knew we had something to prove and that we had to get it done, no matter the cost. And uh, it just feels great, man. Love all these guys. D the defenses, they just, they're tremendous. And it's just a great feeling. My old line, they give everything they have every single play, no matter what the cost is. All of our guys, sick, injured, nobody's 100%, and it just shows the heart that this program has, and uh, it feels great to be able to do this for all these people and bring home the first state championship to the school. But. You know how it feels to be on the other side of this with a loss last season. Just describe how much it, the work was worth it this year. Man, it means everything. Right over there, two yards from the end zone last year is all we were from winning it. And uh, we just knew that all summer long, all season long, you had to go go extra. You had to go beyond where you thought. So we just made sure that we did that, and it showed. And uh, it's just a great year, man. I love these boys. I wouldn't have rather done it with anybody else. And uh, legacy, first ever for this school, and it's a great feeling. Congratulations. Go celebrate. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Well, thanks, uh, Bethany. And let the Snow Angels celebration begin. Celebrate back in the Kansas City metro area, Gardner Edgerton, their first ever state football championship. One year ago, it was tears and a long drive back. Today, it's snow and a celebration for Gardner Edgerton as they win it 22 to 19 over the preeminent power of 6A, the Derby Panthers and uh, you know, this team was down to 13 to nothing, Johnny. And they get the uh, comeback win. Uh, their quarterback, Powell, over 100 yards, two rushing touchdowns. Uh, he was uh, the big star of the game. Dbiak with the big punt block. And, uh, you know, Derby played well, 175 and two touchdowns for Hubbard, but just too many penalties. And Gardner Edgerton, that defense, the real deal. And the flex bone gets it done in the snow. Yeah, Gardner able to keep their poise and not flinch down 13 to nothing in a state championship game. As we talked about, the experience of being here last year kind of kept these guys calm. And, you know, it took that drive at the end of the first half. And then the big special teams pump block by Dibiak kind of gave this team the momentum it needed to finish off the first ever state championship for Gardner Edgerton. Special thanks to the Kansas State High School Activities Association. Thanks to our ADs, Jason Riddell of Gardner Edgerton, Russ Baldwin of Derby. Thanks to our coaches, Brandon Clark and Jesse Owen. Our producer, Ben Joe Novacek for Johnny Beck, Bethany Bowman, our entire Spectrum News crew battling the snowstorm here in Emporia. Kevin White saying so long from Welsh Stadium at ESU. Our final once again, 22-19, Gardner Edgerton making history in the snow.